in 1835. You think that's old? Plato was doing the same thing in 300 BC when he warned about the artists, quote unquote, this has been misinterpreted by many scholars, but he just said that the artists, quote unquote, if they're given too much dominion over the mind, there will be a decline of civilization. I believe that he was aware even then of people who are still with us, still operating in our society today. Don't believe it? This is a quote. It says, I think we are destroying the minds of America, and that has been one of my lifelong ambitions. You can read for yourself who wrote that. They're happy to tell you what they're doing. Well, here's the results of their fine uh, work. Heroin and cocaine use among white youth climbed about 300% over the two decades before the 90s. For American, African-American youth, it jumped to a staggering 13 times the rate of 20 years before. Their frequency of eating disorders in teenage girls has skyrocketed. You're going to find out why. While any of these problems in isolation raises no eyebrows, taken as a group, they are barometers of a sea change, a new kind of toxicity seeping into and poisoning the very experience of childhood, signifying sweeping deficits in emotional competences. But the other side, they say, oh, kids love advertising. It's a gift. It's something they want. There's something to be said about being in there first, about branding children and owning them in that way. And in boys' advertising, antisocial behavior in pursuit of a product, that's a good thing. In 1990, compared to the previous two decades, the United States saw the highest juvenile arrest rate for violent crimes ever. Teen arrests for forcible rape had doubled. Teen murder rates quadrupled, mostly due to an increase in shootings. During the same two decades, the, that should be, suicide rate for teenagers tripled, as did the number of children under 14 who are murder victims. Douglas Rushkoff, in his book Media Virus, says children's television and MTV are, in fact, are the easiest places to launch countercultural missiles. The more harmless or inane the forum, the more unsuspecting the audience. I highlighted MTV there for an interesting point. One of the methodologies that these individuals use in their corporate logos is based on the phoneme system. If you say the word as a mantra to yourself, MTV, and say it quickly, MTV, MTV, empty TV, empty TV, empty TV, empty, empty TV. Ever seen any kids that watch MTV? They look pretty empty to me, wouldn't you say? Well, that's what they were being told. The great philosopher and theologian Erasmus said, the main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth. The others are saying to the children, forget it. Questions are a burden and answers a prison for oneself. Let us take control. Stop thinking. It's too much of a bother. We'll take care of you. So the experts are saying what is at stake is nothing less than the next generation, particularly males who in growing up are especially vulnerable to such disruptive forces as the devastating effects of divorce, poverty and unemployment. The status of American children and families is as desperate as ever. We are depriving millions of children of their competence and moral character. Look at just the terminology there. We are depriving millions of children of their competence and moral character. Not they, but we. The Squire magazine said kids won't even find out how much their values have been perverted until they hit the high school. And Douglas Rushkoff says we have come to expect hidden messages in our kids' television. But this story of manipulation goes way back and has occult roots. Anyone who's done their homework knows that one of the um, groups that operate behind secret societies it was the Fabian Society from Oxford University. It was founded by Sidney West, who again is very happy to tell you what they're doing. He says to play on those millions of minds, to watch them slowly respond to an unseen stimulus, to guide their aspirations without their knowledge. All this, whether in high capacities or in humble, is a big and endless game of chess with ever extraordinary excitement. Well, we got them. They're called the media, but they've been around longer than television because the word, in fact, if you study it, goes back to Medes and to a place in the, Middle East, in the Middle East, not far from where Libya is now, called Medea. And in Medea were the sorcerers and the astrologers, not necessarily negative people, but a tribe, a very adept cult. 
from the ancient world who specialized in the use of talismans, amulets, mantras, and sorcery. And the kings of the world knew that if battle hadn't worked, or if legal means hadn't worked to get rid of an enemy, or you didn't want to be known that you were getting rid of your enemy, you simply called on the Medes. And you bring the representative of the media in to your court, and he'll take care of the problem, because he's going to put the spell on your enemy, the, e the hex, because they know how to do it. And that's where we get the word Mediterranean mediation, meditation, meditation, and medication, the medics. Study this alone, and a whole interesting subject will eat, eat, open itself up. Because we still have, you see, the sorcerers and the voodoo and the witch doctrine. We still have it, only it's now te the techno-shamanism. It's the silicon sorcerers. It's the ivory tower witch doctors. And they're still very busy at what they're doing up on Madison Avenue and behind the other great corporate giants who are only too happy to tell you what to think. Not how to think, but what to think. Ursula Franklin, she says, I picture the reality in which we live in terms of military occupation. We are occupied in the way that the French and the Norwegians were occupied by the Nazis during World War II, but this time by an army of marketeers. We have to reclaim our country from those who occupy it on behalf of their global masters. Interesting terms there, interesting phraseology. Well, these individuals, they do go back a long way. And they have understood completely your psyche. They've had generations, centuries to study it. Their type of sorcery involves different kinds of techniques. But it's still the same effect. Telehypnosis, metacontrast, hemisync, synesthesia, embedding. New names, new terms, but for a very old, well-known practice. To get you into groupthink, into subservience. To get you to embody dialectical divisions of which there is no end in our society. To fashion your allegiances for you to implant associations that your mind might not normally uh, associate, to purvey uh, escapism, rampant escapism, and projection of fantasy into reality, to inflate false personas so that you don't have to be you, you can live it out through the person on the screen, and the excessive eroticization, especially in regards of the female. What we're talking about today has enormous consequences for the women of the planet to find their power again. But just one point, just that little... Um, Anecdote there, we talked about the endless dialectical divisions. Are you aware of how many there are? And that they're crafted based on a very set agenda to pose one party or one group against the, the rest. We could explore that alone. We could do a whole seminar on just that one thing alone of the dialectical divisions that are created in our society. And there are many even in the intellectual academic world in the function of our own senses, in the function of our own biology. And uh, the two that we'll only be able to really touch on today is actually the last ones, liminal or subliminal. We'll be trying to focus more on that. But as I said, this is a very deep subject. We don't have time to go into anything more than an overview. And we, I would love to get into the whole concept of the lost language of symbolism and do a deeper work on this subject. Uh, but that time will have to come. Right now we just have to keep it very topical and accessible. Not only do we have those divisions, but we've got a very, very important tripartite uh, division that these media sorcerers use on us. It is the simple division between the three kinds of intelligence that we have. Most people think only in terms of mental intelligence. No. We should know that there is also body intelligence. Your body is an intelligent, vibrant, living thing. Completely self-contained intelligence there, cellularly. The mind, of course, we're familiar with overstated in our culture to an unbelievable degree. But then there's the heart, the intelligence of the heart. And they know how to send signals and coded messages to each of those kinds of intelligence. When you think they're talking to one, actually they're talking to another. And vice versa. So it's kind of hard to track it. It takes symbol literacy to know what they're doing. Who is the enemy? What tools are they using? They're happy to stimulate you in various ways. They're happy to take things away from you down through the centuries for thousands of years and then replace it with things you don't need. They're happy to make those associations for you that we see on billboards every day. Well, did I give them permission to do that? Did I want to see their artwork uh, facing me or on the sides of buses? I didn't give them permission to talk to me, did I? But they're doing it. Somebody has taken a right off of me 